<laughs> okay. Okay, so let's wait for a good old rub. Actually, what we can start already is that we'll go through the daily schedule, like we always do in the beginning of the retreat, and then Robert will arrive for the empowerment. So, nice to see you all again, most of you. Uh, most of you have uh, learned or joined Open Heart Retreats before. Um, some of you haven't. Um, so, uh, this is the second or the other yearly, week-long retreat we have at present. I think it actually would be better to have week-long retreats like uh, monthly or uh, every other month. I think that at some point when the Sangha becomes a little bigger and we have more resources, more people involved, then um, you know we will have such a retreat schedule, like a proper training schedule of retreats. Um, um, so yeah, seven days on a retreat is a nice... Nice little boost for one's home practice. Uh, certainly, you know, recommend uh, recommend doing as much residential retreats as it's possible to do. So uh, this is the second time, uh, second summer retreat I'm teaching in in UK, and the topic of or the name kind of a theme I've given for this retreat is moisture of awareness, being nourished by love. Uh, uh, moisture of awareness, being nourished by love. I don't know how I came up with that one. <laughs> uh, but, you know, let's see. I like to, as you know, I like to give, you know, different names for retreats and this one got got this name um well something that we have recently i've recently pointed out um kind of tweaking tweaking our um open heart um practice and recognition of the natural state tweaking it in the way that um from the point of view of love, in a different way how it's usually pointed out in Buddhism, and this is this is this is the perspective um, I was thinking when um, thinking of this re this retreat and this name. So, um, uh, in case you haven't joined uh, teachings lately, the past few months. Um, I will point out this uh, aliveness aspect of awareness. I often speak of three basic characteristics of the natural state. Um, cognizance or knowingness, aliveness, and the third one is stability. So the second one, aliveness, is something that uh, we will uh, practice from the point of view of kind of uh, intense, intensified aliveness, which makes it more loving, or uh, you know, it can be felt as more as love than just kind of neutral aliveness. So uh, it's still for practice to be a Chokchen practice or. Um, Vajrayana Buddhist practice, it always needs to have these three basic characteristics. Uh, starting with knowingness, this basic knowing. So, uh, what we are doing here is just tweaking up the second one, aliveness, a little bit. And it gives a very, very different uh, feel of our own natural state uh, than with the than with aliveness. 
So that will be the main theme of this retreat. Um, so it's the usual pretty common daily program we have. 5.40, wake up. Um, and then from 6 to 7 we do some physical practices, Qigong and physical dynamic concentration, abbreviated as PDC. Um, I think on all residential retreats up until now in UK or in Ireland, in the morning we have done Ruchen. Um, and I think that we might do Ruchen on this retreat as well on some mornings. But mostly we will practice some Qigong and physical dynamic concentration, probably also some stretches, yoga stretches. And then it will be curious to see how it affects your Ruchen practice. But we'll go day by day. I hurt my back last week, pulled it twice, so I can't do, you know, you, you know I'm a... I'm like an acrobat from a circus normally, but now it's kind of a, kind of tight, so I can't do all the fancy stuff I, I usually do. But um, um, then I'll guide you through stretches. So six to seven, Qigong and PDC. Then morning recitation from seven until seven ten, seven fifteen. Uh, morning recitation contains Song of the Vajra, which is on these prints, and Long Body Chitta. And in a minute I'll give the empowerment for the Song of Vajra, if you haven't yet received it. And then after recitation we have Open Heart Yoga, and then a uh, little bit stretching and dancing in a circle here, like type of walking meditation, and then practicing Api Yoga. So that's the first session of the day, from 6 o'clock until 8.30. And then from 8.30 until 10, breakfast and work period. And then the second session of the day, from 10 until 11.45, uh, Api Yoga practice... Um, with a, um, I'm kind of thinking the right word, not invention, but we'll try something different on this retreat. So we will practice Ati Yoga uh, that is clarified uh, with these Sem Jin practices. Sem Jin is a Tibetan word which means, um, it refers to, well, it literally means to hold or to grasp the natural state. So these Semjin practices, you all know Pet Mantra. Pet Mantra is a Semjin. And then there are a bunch of other Semjins, simple, short techniques. I taught the whole set of 13 Semjins last winter retreat. Um, but on this retreat we will try something new because so we will do same genes together like every five, six, seven minutes. Pets, ah syllables, and also ah, ba, hu syllables with visualization. And the reason why we do it together every seven minutes or so is because um, I've noticed it over my years of teaching same genes is that sometimes people are shy using pets or you know in group setting people are shy and this um, has the uh, bad effect that when it's needed when the same gene is needed when it's not used you know the practice is not correct you know if we sit in samsaric state and just remain in that state that's not chokchen practice because, because there's no recognition of the natural state of the three characteristics. So that's why we are trying on this retreat doing same genes together. So the second session of the day we will do that. Then from 12 midday until 1.15 lunch and work. From 1.15 until 3 p.m. 
guru yoga practice and ati yoga and also as usual a uh, question and answer or a talk um so guru yoga practice in the afternoon we don't have musical instruments this time so we will do some other forms of recitations and deity practice also um and regarding question and answer uh um, as usual, write your questions on a paper note and put it on somewhere on my, my seat or here somewhere where I can find it. And I would like I would ask you to ask questions of things that are relevant to your practice. Uh, not something that you feel um, what's the word like uh, just for your information. But what is relevant to your practice? What you don't understand yet? Ask such questions. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, um, like a concise question, not too vague stuff. Um, so that's the third session of the day. Um, and then from 3 until 3.30, we have uh, coffee, tea and snack. And after that, longer afternoon break until 6 p.m. And then the fourth session of the day from 6 until 7.45 uh, is the same session as the second one of the day, meaning Ati Yoga and Sem Jins, again in five, six, seven, seven minute intervals. There is also the optional practice of Chokchen Metta, practicing in pairs, holding hands, watching eyes, uh, but that's optional. Let's see, we won't do it every evening anyway, but let's see if we will do it on some evenings. And then the evening recitation, the last number of the day. Then at 8 p.m., including this evening, there will be dinner and work, and then from 10 p.m. until 5.40 there will be rest. Uh, yeah. So, uh, as you know, um, talking is allowed on this retreat. This is not a silent retreat. Um, and these prohibitions that are written on the daily schedule are not rigid. Well, maybe I should say that... <laughs> Uh, it says no internet, no telephone, no reading. So don't do reading because you don't need it. And don't use the internet unless you have to for some reason. But the, the main idea of these prohibitions is that you're not using your smartphone or laptop like you normally do. Because you don't need, need to. Unless you have some really good reason. And also no telephone. I often say that you know, if you have ill relatives or small children, it's fine to fine to text and and make phone calls. Um, in that case, but not in others. So, if you don't have a good reason, just don't use it. Uh, dedicate your time and and energy for practice here. Prioritize practice for once, at least for seven days. Um, so our uh, daily program, it's, it's quite easy in the sense that we are not sitting here, um, you know, doing sitting, meditating in sitting posture for not that much. Of course, we have four sessions and we do some sitting, but we also do, you know, free form stretching. We do physical practices. We do Chokchen dance. We do recitation. We do tantric practices. So it's quite a, a varied uh, style of practicing. Um, and also we can talk with each other during breaks and we have long enough breaks, all the meal breaks, so that we can take rest or take a walk outside. Uh, so it's quite relaxed. 
um, and the reason for that is that um, I try not to be too, I try not to sound too critical, but uh, there is difference between sutra, sutra style practice and tantra style practice. And tantra, in in the case of open heart, means that um, you know recognition of the natural state. Those three basic characteristics makes it a tantric approach that is based on on Chokchen practice. So it's very different than sutra, sutrayana, sutra style non tantric training where you just sit silently a lot, like ten hours, twelve hours, fifteen hours a day. But nevertheless. Even though it's relaxed and it's varied in its form, um, you know, we can have a break or when we are having meal, talking with um, other people, you know, we can rest and return into that recognition of the natural state, you know, and that's the practice. So... Um, during resting, during talking with others, eating, taking walks, uh, the time that is spent outside this room, practice room, we can also use and should use for recognition of our natural condition. So it really is uh, that simple. Um, so, our basic instruction for recognizing the natural state is that if it's cloudy in our mind, if it's busy, and so that we don't, we cannot access uh, that basic knowingness at an instant, then we cut through it with shouts with dynamic concentration practices. Always. This is a unique, kind of unique uh, aspect in open heart training because I think we shout much, much more than, you know, in any other existing lineage of Buddhism. So, and this has many benefits, you know. When we shout, when we apply that strong concentration momentarily, uh, it cuts through. You know, if we think of our... We have three bodies, right? Physical body. Then we have energy body or the mind. When I speak of mind and energy body, I always mean the same thing. And then there is uh, awareness body. Body of awareness. Um, so, when we are confused, it always happens in the second body in the mind, in the energy body. So when we shout, uh, we split, we make a hole into the energy body. And this doesn't mean, you know, energy body is made of chakras, energy centers, and nadis, energy channels, loads of them. So all of our thinking, emotions, all of that... Um, uh, is concerned with these centers and channels. There's, there's prana energy, vital energy, flowing through our energy body, and this causes, you know, they are kind of like stamps on our centers and channels. Karmas stamped on the channels. So when prana flows through our mind, um, this makes us have thoughts and reactions, ideas, um, and so on. All kinds of functioning of the mind. So if we don't, if we can't recognize that basic knowingness, you know, when the mind is busy, when we cut through it, it doesn't mean that it breaks or cuts the channels or centers. It means that it disperses that mind content, that energetic 
karmic stuff in those channels momentarily. It cleans it out momentarily. So um, it means that those channels and centers, they become clear, pure for a moment. It makes a whole. That's what it means. And when we do that, there's no other option than for the natural, unobstructed, uh, free state, freedom state to appear. And that's the genius of dynamic concentration. And that's the reason why open heart practitioners get have these boomy openings or awakening experiences so quickly. Because we use this technique to uh, on daily basis, so you know there's no other option than recognition. It's just pushing through that samsaric stuff. Um, so mm, yeah, so keep it with you. Keep the instructions with you uh, during breaks also. If you need to shout during break, uh, do. Maybe, mm, well, we have rooms and somebody might be sleeping in the room. Uh, so let's keep the room area upstairs. Let's keep it silent. And also during night, uh, no shouting practice. Uh, maybe if you want to, you can go on top of the hill and <laughs> shout there at 4 a.m. If, if, if you want. But um, during night time from 10 p.m. to 5.40, uh, no showers, no uh, noise. So I was talking about the basic view of practice and, and using um, dynamic concentration to cut through the mind, any layers that there might be in the mind. Uh, and from there, when we shout um, and there's this hole we make a hole then we don't need to do anything then we just relax and be naturally and automatically a recognition of the natural state takes place so when we shout <laughs> we don't need to keep keep tensing up when we Cut through, we completely relax and recognition will take place automatically. Don't try to get it from there anymore. It automatically appears. And from there, you know, when we have that recognition, from there we again feel what happens in the mind. So we are, with the shout, we are not pushing away stuff. We are just making the whole, and within that whole, we include all functions of the mind, all content of the mind. So, this is Vipassana. So, we um, recognize the natural state, which is, which is one type of shamatha practice. Samatha pra practice according to the Chokchen view. And from there, we integrate whatever karmic stuff we have going on in the mind by allowing that stuff to be there and recognizing it, feeling it, and welcoming it. That's the practice. That's the main practice. Simple as that. Okay, let's continue to empowerment. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, I have three things to say. Uh, first, uh, like there are in every room there are cups, there are mugs. Uh, but we don't need them in the room. We need them down here. So if you can bring um, a few of them at least, I think both. Both of them is. Um, second, was the there's a writing pad there for questions. Uh, 
should be on the bottom of that question screen. Question time. Uh, and also on the wall behind there, there's a geographic service list uh, because we all have jobs on this retreat uh, that we usually do uh, because it's an integral part of the retreat experience to work together. Uh, so make like familiarize yourself with the with the work. Uh, several of you are on different um, cleanup jobs. So there's dinner, uh, lunch, uh, afternoon break, and uh, breakfast, lunch, afternoon break, and dinner. Uh, and it has to be like fully clean, the kitchen, and ready for the next uh, small read and thing. Where some of you have cleaning up um, this area and this area, and toilets as well. You are on toilet sheet. Um, so you will have to be um, fun with me in the mornings after uh, first open house ready. Let me just check if there are some other touch bases. Should be pretty straightforward. Uh, but if you have any questions regarding your role, uh, then come and ask me. And if you have any questions regarding where things are, like uh, if you need toilet paper, stuff like that, uh, Lucy uh, will be able to tell you where things are kept. And also, if you need anything, um, uh, yeah, if you need. Yeah. That's it. Okay, straighten your spine, please. Sit in a good posture. So I'll pass you two empowerments. One is for the Song of Vajra, which is a text or text or reading empowerment, and the other one is um, physical exercise empowerment. First sit, relax the body, scan through the body. You can close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. Letting tensions release. And letting tensions release. Letting tension to release. And while tensions, while tissues are uh, softening, knowing it. Knowing the release of tensions from the body.
letting the relaxation go deeper and deeper in tissues. Even going through bones. and knowing it at the same time. All beings have Buddha nature, nature of liberation, liberated mind. Us as human beings have the precious opportunity to recognize our nature of mind and realize our Buddha nature. For this reason, with love, with sincerity, I am asking Guru Rinpoche's blessing for a song of Vajra empowerment for everyone present, for the sake of all sentient beings. Feel the energy in the room with your body, with your whole being. And listen to me chant to you the song of the Vajra. The song of the indestructible mind, indestructible awareness. The song of the Vajra Unborn yet continuing without interruption, neither coming nor going, omnipresent, supreme Dharma, immutables, beyond definition, spontaneously self Berating perfect state without obstruction manifest the very beginning self created without location nothing negative to reject and nothing positive Accept infinite expanse, all pervading, immense and limitless, unbound with nothing to dissolve or to be liberated from present beyond space and time, existent the beginning immense dimension of inner space radiant through clarity 
The sun and moon self-perfected, indestructible. Kvadra stable as a mountain, pure as a lotus, so strong as a lion, incomparable pleasure beyond all limits, illumination, equanimity, peak of the Dharma, light of the universe, perfect from the beginning. Feel the charge. Don't sleep. Now is not the time to sleep. And then continuing to Chokchen empowerment for physical exercise. Just keep feeling the charge in this room, transmitting from myself to you. You can keep feeling it. I will read the basic info of this physical exercise empowerment. This empowerment is to reveal the natural state during physical exercise. It is applicable to all forms of exercise, for example, yoga, running, sports, swimming, martial arts, weightlifting, and so on. After one receives this empowerment, it becomes active automatically when one begins to exercise and lasts until the training session ends. No prayers or mantras are needed. Doing the exercise, putting the body under strain is all that is needed. To help you a little bit to get the recognition correctly, open your eyes and look at me for a moment. Feel my body with your body and look at my eyes.
Good. Then you can return to your own. Stay with it. If you have any physical discomfort at any stage when sitting here in the meditation room, uh, do feel free to adjust or change your posture. There is no point to try to uh, what is the word? Trying to stick with pain.
take a few deep breaths. I am humbly thanking and hands, hands joined bowing at the feet of Guru Rinpoche for these teachings. <coughs> so um this empowerment for the song of the vajra means that now that you have received it every time you read this text song of the vajra there will be a charge in it so the charge the empowerment will activate this vajra state of your own mind and awareness will become apparent uncovered so that's the gift of it and um, uh, Chokchen empowerment for physical exercise like I read uh, the moment you start exercising be it any type of exercise actually my experience is that it is that it doesn't even have to be a strenuous exercise <laughs> in the morning I usually I always start my day with physical practices and I often start with standing meditation, just standing in a stat static standing posture and the moment I start doing it, it switches on. Uh, and what I mean by that, that it switches on, you know, uh, in open heart we speak of these bumis and mahasita bumis and anyone who has opened Mahasita Bumis, meaning has had at least 11 Bumi openings. For such practitioner, this um, natural state, you don't have to seek for it. It's just automatically there. But when I say that it switches on, is is the, um, the um, coverage of it, the kind of extent of it, and the richness of the natural state, because that comes only much later on in the practice. It doesn't come uh, when one opens Mahasiddha Bhumis. It doesn't even come apparent with perfecting a few Bhumis. You know, there's immense richness, kind of um, uh, rich taste to it. And that's the thing. That's why Chokchen empowerments are given. Uh, so um, it can be any type of exercise. It automatically switches on uh, however you choose to exercise. And if you don't exercise, <laughs> hopefully it gets you exercising. It's very useful because, like I said in the, in the basic info from the website, you don't need to say prayers or mantras. You don't need to do anything. Uh, but it switches on. So this is very, very useful. You know. Oh, yes. That is, I feel, very, uh, really, really precious gift that I have, I have received and now I'm passing it to you. This is the first time I'm, I'm giving this empowerment. Do you want me to initiate Exercise. Initiate what? Just no. It just yeah. Yeah. It switches on automatically. Okay. Let's take a break for five, ten minutes, toilet break, and then we'll continue with Guru Yoga. 